All right, guys. Hi, Tiffany here. We are here for part four now. Finally putting this disappearing four patch together. I just got done picking it up off the floor because sitting on the floor was killing me. So I'm back now and now we can just start sewing it together and then be done with this thing. Well, besides two borders, but hey, at least this part will get done and I won't have anything left to do. <laughs> <laughs> because I gotta get a customer quilt done so once I get that started on I'll probably record that process as well so um, well I'll record it and make a video from it because doing it live it's gonna be a lot of just off and on randomness so I might as well just record as I go and then make one final video of the whole entire thing but I still plan on doing all sorts of other things in between so yeah all right guys hello marie hi diane hi tracy all right nice to have you guys back um let me just plug this in i have like a big disaster going i don't even have my music on I'm trying to rush things so i guess while that's getting on we can start hi diane yes everybody's back hi terry okay so Wow, crawling on a living room floor, especially hard floors, I do not recommend it for those of you who are like me, who are weak in the knees and weak in the hips. It is not fun, let me tell you. And I could only imagine with age that it's just going to get worse. Like, I really should have just took my wheelchair into the living room and just leaned down and put everything down. But then I'd have a backache. So, I guess the way I did it just got it done. And here's my big stack right here. And that's all I technically need is my big huge stack because I am not going to move. I'm not even going to press in between. I'm going to press this whole entire thing on the big board when I am finished. So I'm just going to start sewing the rows together. This is probably going to be super loud at first. All right. I have to have some kind of music on or else I feel like I'm just talking to myself. All right, guys. So let's get started I am not going to do any pinning either I know there's going to be a lot of seam matching so for beginners you can um, pin in between if you would like it make the whole process easier honestly well come out perfect but I am not 100% perfect on all my seams only my center little seam was the the center of every block is the only thing that's on point except for three blocks the rest of them they're a little bit here and there, but you know what? I don't care because I don't make these for perfection. I make them for love. So, for the love of doing so, you know? Um, let me see. Teresa is messaging me. She, I don't know, can't click on live or something, so. So I'm making sure she knows that it's on completely so that she can come join. See if she figures it out so what i'm going to do is i just have them all stacked my direction of my block where my rows are written it is all road and then i have my pressing marks which way i want my seams to go so i'll remember that when i get to that part of putting the rows together but for now for the pieces i just ignore that part and just remember this is number one and every time i pick one up it is always in the same direction. I'm probably going to have to move my pile back a little because I'm going to end up having a really long row right here. So I'm just going to pick them up and remember where they are. And when I get to the last one, I should know. Then what I'm going to do is all of my seams I've pressed. Okay, so here's another little tip. tip. On anything that has black, the whole center is pieced out. Anything that is green, the whole center is, the center right here is pieced in. So where the center comes in, they're pieced opposite of each other, or not pieced, uh, pressed opposite. So everyone should lay the right way. And this is the way it came off. I'm messing with them, so I don't want to put them in the wrong way. But they're all pressed opposite. And you know how hard that was to remember every single one which way it should be pieced so that they all nest see how these are these go this way and then one out and these go two out and one the opposite way so every single one should be a uh, yeah oh you 
finally finished it, Diane. Wow. So I should be looking for that. I thought he'd be on today because more blocks. You know, how that's a lot of blocks he got for this newest one, the Love Shouldn't Hurt. That is a whole heck of a lot of blocks. There's going to be a lot of quilts, more than I thought in my mind. But it's probably going to be about the same, honestly. In the end, it'll probably be at the same amount of quilts. Because the same amount of people are sending the same amount of stuff in. Except instead of a whole quilt from me, he got 10 blocks. But hey, it's still something. Like so many things going on at once, you know? So I'm just going to finger press, knowing that this way I wrote the arrow to go this way. So I'm just going to give it a quick, quick finger press. Because by the time I get to pressing the rows, or pressing the whole entire thing, they'll naturally kind of be laying that way. So see, my seams are nicely nested, and that's just from holding it. And I'm just going to pick them all up the exact way that they were laying, and nest all these seams by holding them because they're already ready to go. Oh, stay. Sometimes the, I didn't do any trimming down either. They all came out about the same eight and a quarter. There might be one that's a little bit bigger than the quarter, but I don't care. It might be a little bit smaller. I don't care. They're all going to line up, and it's all going to lay nice because my quarter-inch seam is consistent. So that part doesn't matter. <laughs> I'll hold it the carpet to crawl anymore. <laughs> That's why I can't wait till I'm out in my garage again. Like I said, my design wall is portable, but it has thread stuck on it. Like you would not believe there's so much thread on it. So when I drag it around, especially if I bring it in the house, it will drag the thread through the house. And I, since I've been in the house, I have already been dragging so much thread that I'm like going over the floors, making sure I clean it all up so it doesn't get caught up in our Kirby vacuum. <laughs> Cause we're always picking the things off the spinner. So, yeah, I've been going around cleaning it up, especially on the carpet part of the house, which are the bedrooms. And then I also have to pick it up if it's in bulk pieces because the baby, I don't want her getting them in her mouth. And since she's way she, her age, she's picking up everything and it all goes in the mouth. <laughs> I don't want her choking on bread. So. already looking for, out for it, Diane. I have watched all of your guises, and they are so beautiful. Everybody that watches that I know that sent in quilts. Just like I'm waiting to see blocks sent in from everybody. That's why I'm trying to catch the quilting marine every time he comes on with this new one to see everybody's blocks. Trying to make sure they're all like fitting just right. It's all about fabric manipulation. Manipulate it the way you need it to go. For almost four years. It's oh, over three and a half, but not yet four. And I don't know if... I've been told by quite a few people, they tell me that it actually looks like this is probably my previous life or something because I should have been doing this long. It looks like I've been quilting for 20 years and I just started and I caught on right away. Oops, stay down. I don't know. Maybe it was just because there's a lot of artists in my family of all different sort. Not just regular drawing art, but musician arts and my mom sews and all sorts of things. And this kind of just, nobody quilts though. Or at least nobody that I know of quilts, but I picked it up just randomly. The last one with black and gold. Which one? Are you talking? I have no idea what you're talking about. Unless you guys are talking to each other. Sometimes comments goes faster than I can see. 
My pressing didn't come out perfect. Some of these are flipped, but that's okay. If you don't like them like that, you just take these little snips and snip a little snip, and then it, when you press it, it'll fold down flat. I really don't care. It folds down just the same once it's quilted. Hi, Susan. Yep, just started sewing. It's okay. I feel like when I talk to you guys and, and with the chatting thing, to me it reminds me of telethons. <laughs> this reminds me of like a, a telethon to like process something that's going to be offered. <laughs> like, I don't know. That's what live chat reminds me of. I kind of actually just had an idea about that too. Telethoning off a quilt with donations of some sort to go to shelters and or whatever so that somehow, not that there's a profit, but the profit of the, you know what I mean? can go some to the quilter or whoever put it together and then some of the, most of the rest of the money can go towards um, like whatever the donation you're donating, you know, making money for that. I hope you understand what I'm saying there. <laughs> Sometimes I brain fart. Don't want to use them. I think if you pin this whole thing, it's just a long process. It makes it take a lot longer. Yep, that's me. I picked it up like I was just born to do it. Like, like it was something I did in my previous life. Just, I don't know. That's if you believe in previous lives. Some of the things I do in life, I, I kind of believe that probably came from a previous me. <laughs> I've been all over the place with the things that I do. This and riding motorcycle had to be my two favorite things, though, in life. Things to do, I mean. Aside from having children and such, you know. But when it came to, like, hobbies, my motorcycle riding was definitely... I was, you know, since I couldn't ride anymore, quilting became my full-time hobby, you know. All right, row one, done. Yeah, I think a telephone is a good idea. But without the telephone, without the telephone thing, with this, because I've seen on the quilting ring, I don't know how it's done, I think it's somewhere in the signing up to go live part, but making it to where those donation things that can go through what are those called i don't know what it's called something chat it's like a big chat where money can be sent um something like that to go through so that it can go towards i should do that with my ms quilt because i don't know if any whoever's watching this and have heard me in my past videos i want to do a, a quilt for to get my ms walk back in town i can do something like that where making the quilt can be auctioned off to the highest donation and then the money can go towards having that walk back in town. Yes. Teresa, since we talk all the time, remind me that tomorrow, because I probably will forget. <laughs> Super chat, that's the word. I knew it was something like that. So if I just keep going at this and not move at all and not do any of the pressing in between and just do the pressing last, I should do this part way faster than putting these blocks together. Let me tell you, the standing and trimming of all these was definitely during being sick. I did not want to do it. And then I made that messed up block, which would be my boo-boo block here. I put it back together the way it's supposed to be, <laughs> but it looked kind of silly. So I just decided to do the humility block instead. So it's, yeah. I thought it was a better idea. 
My husband liked the idea too. He said that would have just looked funny throwing that back in the quilt. So I don't know. Somehow I cut one side, like one side, all, two of them were like an inch and a quarter, like they were supposed to be. And then somehow I messed one up and cut it like an inch and three quarters or something because it came out huge. <laughs> or I must have slipped the ruler, but obviously I was tired and not feeling well during my sickness. So. And I tried to fix it, but I tried to fix it, it didn't come out the way I had hoped, so I just said screw it. Made a whole different block. This finger pressing in between really helps as well. And another thing with doing these two different color tones, I always remember that my very printed printed blocks are in the top corner and then my highlight prints which are po mainly polka dots and X's they are always in the bottom corner that's another thing when piecing these rows together I always remember that that's the way it goes so if anything gets out of place I'll know that that's the orientation it's supposed to go and you know I could have made two quilts out of all this by the way guys just thought I'd let you know I decided to do all 120 blocks to one quilt but you could actually make two lap quilts with this. They would be like seven across by nine down or something like that. This will come out 80 by... eighty Without the borders, it'll be 80 by 102 or something like that. So it's definitely queen size. And I totally did not plan for that. That's just how it's going to come out. <laughs> so it'll be quite big. Yeah. That's what I was doing during my sickness. Oh, and or if I was messing up, I would just play with the... If I really wanted to be at the machine, um, I'd play on my... And quilt on my... Um, my idea quilt is what I call it, and I'm going to probably name it that, my idea quilt. <laughs> because that's where I put my quilting ideas. If it comes to my head and I need to get it out, they all go into that quilt. And we ran out of bobbin because I sewed yesterday. I'll try to make this fast. <laughs> That's funny, Susan, yeah. I guess when you have to stop, you have to stop. And if you're messing up, then stop. But I'm I'm the kind of person, if I know something has to be done, because I give myself such tight... Because I quilt so fast and make things so fast, I give myself really small deadlines. Like this quilt that I'm doing for that lady, the, my customer, I gave myself a very tight deadline of starting it to be for Christmas, but and starting it now, and I have to still go shopping for the fabric <gasps> and I have not found the one that I need to find online so I'm actually going to hold that up to you guys because if you guys have other ways of finding fabric like I will totally pay for it if one of you guys has it or can find it or found it out I'm going to hold this up to you and I'm going to read off what's on the salvage take a paper and pen and write it down and if you guys can find it or help me find it because I went online all different kinds of ways trying to look up lost fabric you know like fabric that's not made anymore if you guys can help me find it that would be so amazing so this is what it is it's little snowmen and it says snow angel snow and they got candy canes and all sorts of stuff and then it says it's the number. Okay, ready for this? It's C P. So the letter C, the letter P. So C as in couch and P as in plate. 
four, zero, six, nine, five. So CP four, zero, six, nine, five called looking up snowman. And it's, I'm pretty sure this name is pronounced Jeff. It's G E O F F Allen, A L L E N for Springs, S P R I N G S creative C R E A T I V E products, P R O D U C T S group. LLC 2016. It's not even that old. It's so weird that I can't find it. I even went on this Creative Springs product group thing and they sell to a company. They don't sell or distribute to us. They sell it to the stores. So it's impossible to get a reprint. Um, so yeah, again, ugh, this is what it is. And I'll read it one more time. C P four zero six nine five. Looking up snowman. Jeff Allen for Creative Products Group LLC, 2016. I need like three yards of this stuff, and I could probably get away with two and a half, but I'm hoping for like three. <laughs> so, because I have this, but it's just a it's a cut, you know, it's not even enough. But if you, my viewers out there, can help me find this and let me know, I will. You know what I mean? Obviously, I'll be super thankful if you find a site that I can get it off of. But I found it on eBay and I'm not paying. It's, I've never bought from those kind of things on eBay. It comes from a different page that links to eBay, but it doesn't actually go directly to eBay. So I've never purchased from that. And it's like $16.95 a yard. So that's the only one I can find. And if I have to get it, I will try, but I'm not really ordering from unknown sites. If you get where I'm going on that one, I'm pretty sure none of you order from aunt strange websites as well. And I am not going to trust my credit card on stuff like that, being that we've had it stolen twice now, <laughs> our number. So, yeah, I am trying to find that. So, for all my subscribers, you can help me find that within the next two weeks, three weeks. <laughs> that way I have enough time for it to be shipped to me, if it's found. Or if one of you have it, because I know a lot of you have a lot of fabric. It would be even better. So, anything about Christmas time stuff, it's so hard to refine something that was used for Christmas, you know? Makes it so hard. Not Jeff, G E J E F F. It's G E O F F. Yeah, it's spelt weird. At first, I thought it was like Geoff or something like that, but no. My husband says that's how some places they spell Jeff. Weird, right? So. G E O F F Allen. And if there's something that you guys can find that's similar, like I've looked, I was on Missouri Star, I went on Jordan Fabrics, I went on um, Marshall Dry Goods, I've been on. Um, my local ones, a couple out ones, Walmart, um, Joann's, I've been on all of those so far looking at all the Christmas prints. And let me tell you, I cannot find them. And this lady is like dead set determined on having that material. So I told her it's very hard to find. And if I can't find it, I can find something super duper similar. So, and if not, then I will just cut pieces out of that one, I guess, and applique it in fussy cut it in somewhere, you know, into one part or another. All right, back to this anyway. I've been like, that's why I haven't done anything about this customer quote, because I can't find anything. I will though, I am determined. She definitely put me on the spot when it came to finding something though. She didn't like all the rest of the Christmas prints I have out there.
Yeah, I went on Etsy. The ma I typed it in like several different ways. Snowman prints. I typed it in with the actual name. I typed it in with just the number off of it and that it was a 2016. I tried it 15 different ways. And I can't find it. I found the pattern of the quilt that she wants me to make, but I'm not going to buy the pattern. I'm making my own thing. I'm going to be creative. <laughs> That's why I said I'll record the process. That way you guys can see me in my creative mode of actually trying to get things right measurement-wise. <laughs> it's a good thing 90% of the quilt is all applique. The rest of it is just backgrounds and a couple piecing things, which I... I already drew it up. That's what I got to do. That's the center of it. And I already even drew my measurements, so I'm hoping that that's correct. <laughs> and I wrote where I need to start and how I need to get it. And then, here's a... If you guys remember that we're doing a Bargello next, right? Pretend that there's color. This is on paper. I designed it, my own design, so it'll be a Tiffany Groff quilt design, Bargello style. That's next. <laughs> so, oh, so those of you who are watching now and know that this is my next tutorial, you need two jelly rolls for this project, but you can do just one, but it's going to be a little bit more difficult and it'll turn out lap size. Because of the design that I drew, I drew something for two jelly rolls. So it's two jelly rolls, and for because we're going to be ex making it bigger, I'm saying three yards, one yard of three different color prints. So whatever three print colors that accentuate your jelly rolls, those are the three. You want one yard of each color. So if you need red, blue, and green, then do red, blue, and green. If you want black, white, and gold, then do black, white, and gold. You know what I mean? So that's for the jelly roll next tutorial. I don't know when it'll be, but it'll be soon because it's already drawn up. All the math is done. Like. I spent with my husband and the kids doing the math on this, and the finish should be around 59 by 76, and then that's before borders, so just thought I'd let you guys know that it's already drawn up. My design is out of my head and on paper. So that's Tiffany Groff quilt design there. All my stuff, well, most of my stuff is all original. It's off of somebody else's idea, obviously, but it's my original pattern. Just like this one. Okay, hold on. I'm catching up here. Okay, where are we at? Where are we at? Stop, you see the thing? The material that I'm looking for, I'm making something for a customer with. Yeah, I'm fast, sorry. When I'm normal and in a normal mood with just the slightest amount of pain, but when I'm excited about something, like quilting, <laughs> I'm fast. Talking and all. Are you talking about the material that I just asked for, Marie? Okay, Marie, down below is my links to my Facebook and my Instagram, because my Etsy don't matter, but go to my Facebook one, click on it, and if you know how to copy and paste the link, paste it in a message to me on my um, Facebook thing. You don't have to do it while we're doing this live, but if, if you found it, then um, I'll go on there. Just... Click on my link below for my Facebook page. It'll take you to my um, quilt page. And then just direct message me on there. And I'll get it. That way I can click on it from my tablet, which you guys are on. Because my Etsy's on tablet. I didn't know thousands of, bolt, thousands of bolts website. If you guys know all these websites, why don't you tell me? <laughs> oh, 
All righty. Awesome. Thank you. Now I can get that part already started on because I was supposed to go today to purchase the fabric, but I'm going to go tomorrow because there's no kids tomorrow, so I have the day off to do whatever. Which would be fabric purchasing. All right. Thank you, guys. See, I, that's why I love you guys me out as much as I'm helping you out with new patterns and <laughs> tutorials. I'm not caught up on as many tutorials as I should be doing, but we'll get there. We'll get there. My new camera has not come in the mail yet. Like, I really don't like some of the Amazon shops because it says it's supposed to be delivered on the 25th, which is in two or three days, whatever day today is. So, then I have to play with the camera for a little while to make sure I know what I'm doing. You know. Alright, row two done. All that talking. That talking slows me down. And if I sing, I'm sorry, because that's what I do when I'm alone. <laughs> Yeah, I never heard of that. I usually just type in Google um, fabric stores, and the ones that come up are like Missouri Star, <laughs> Jordan Fabrics, and the, the big chain ones. I never heard of thousands of bolts. It also probably comes up that way because that's what I order off of the most. Of course, I order off of Etsy a lot, too. realized that I was finger pressing that one row number two the wrong way. Aha. Oh well I don't care. I'll just finger do it when I get to it. Because I'll be doing that. Oh yeah, see that's another thing. Only one I need more than one yard unless I buy from several different three different vendors for one yard each, you know what I mean? I guess I could do it that way. The lady paid me half up front. Like I told you guys in my last video, when you make quilts for customers, it's best to take half of your money first. Half of the price down because the things like out you're going and spending all that money on your own, and if they flake out, you just started something that you don't even want in reality, you know what I mean? Like, I don't want a Christmas quilt. I'm not really, nothing against Christmas. I just don't want a Christmas quilt. So, especially one with applique stuff all over it. And I showed you guys the picture in my last video. It's definitely gonna be a challenge. Wow. Are you like on your computer at the same time while watching this? <laughs> I don't see how you guys do that. I could, I have to exit the screen to go to anything else on mine. I can't do two things at once. And I don't own a computer, so I have a tablet that has a keyboard on it. But I don't own a computer. My husband has one, but we were going to try to do my live videos from it. And his streaming, oh my god, is it so slow. I think it's like, like, the pages take forever to come up. We don't do really anything on computers.
And once I get my camera, I won't have to go live as often. I can make more videos. Because I have little SD card things to put in to my device so that I can record more. I'm not technologically advanced. So what's everyone doing besides watching me? What did everybody have for dinner tonight? There's a random one, right? My daughter made mac and cheese, so we had mac and cheese. And even though I'm lactose intolerant, I take the medication so that I can eat it. But it was just a quick and easy dinner. Because the babies were here. Although I'll probably eat a second dinner, like a tuna sandwich or something. Why couldn't you watch me live all the time? Roast. I'm getting ready to make one next week. Except I'm not making it roast style. I'm making it into a hot roast in the crock pot soup slash stew kind of. I'm making it with noodles to make it like a stew. My husband got two roasts, so I'm gonna make one in the crock pot, and then I don't, don't I don't know what I'll do with the other one. Here where I live, we cannot use our oven in the summertime. There is no oven baking, so it's all stovetop and crock pot and microwave foods <laughs> in the summertime. We've tried using the oven at night, and it heats up this house even with the AC on. It heats up this house so hot. So we just choose not to. Just like our water heater in the summertime, we turn our water heaters off as well. Now you guys know how hot it is here. Because, I mean, who doesn't need a water heater, right? We, we don't. <laughs> Strangest thing. All right. Row three. Nine more to go. <laughs> Hoping that it doesn't take that long to get them all done. And then sew them all together. But that'll probably get done off screen and or off screen and then I can show you the finished product kind of thing. If I wasn't talking as much, I'd probably just, just keep going and not take any breaks. But I like to look at you guys, you know. tenders and potatoes now that sounds good see now you guys are going to make me want to go and get something after i'm done here <laughs> no i'll just stick with my tuna sandwich and potato chips or something something simple i try not to eat too much before i try my trying to try to go to bed because i try my trying to try to go to bed at around midnight which is not even close to yet it's only 8 30 here Is that on the Etsy one the sh from Shanghai, or are you talking about my um, stuff on Amazon? Because I'm a, I know what the Amazon stuff is like. I get order stuff on that all the time, and it takes so long. Unless it's from an American shipper. Otherwise, it comes from other countries.
the Etsy one takes that long? Yeah, I'm not going to order if it's coming from there. Is that on the one that has more than a yard? I'm just nesting my seam. Making sure they're laying nice and flat. And ever since I started doing all my tutorials all the time and stuff, I started using my cutter. And let me tell you, it is a disaster in this machine. So I'm going to have to make a video on showing you guys how I clean my machine. <laughs> because it is horrible in there. And I... Where did it go? This was full. Can you see? It barely has a drop in it. I need to get machine oil. Like bad. Because it's getting so full in there from constantly doing this that I have used, it was like way up here to the top, I've used all that oil in just two, three months. I can't believe how much oil I've used. A lot. Yeah, the things I order on Etsy, they usually come pretty quick. But then they come, it says on the Etsy shop that it's coming from whatever organ the last order I got came from Washington, which are both close to me, so. The one, the one Etsy shop that I ordered from two times ago, they even refunded me shipping prices. I guess they assumed it was going to cost a lot, and turns out it barely costed anything at all, so they refunded me a lot of my money. If you hear a weird sound, that's because my kids got this weird toy, her and her friend. And it makes funny sounds. It is a duck. Is it a duck? I mean a chicken. Not a chicken. A rooster. It's your new best friend. That's my 16-year-old's toy. Her and her best friend got toys. We were going to scare Rita with it. And did you? No, because I forgot to bring it over. Um. He fell out of his trampoline, though. Like, through the net. He got up and he's like... You should have been here when I was laying all this on the floor. Sorry. I would have needed the help because my legs are killing me. Yeah, but he went flying through and like hurt himself. But he thought it was funny. What is in here to make that You had a long day at work today? today? Love you. Boom! There I go speeding too. That's another thing about this machine is if you take off too fast, or actually any machine that has the really fast speed on these um, uh, industrial machines, if you start off going too fast, the, um, you'll lose your thread out of your needle. It's a good thing I could still thread it. <laughs> Good night, Sonata. Am I saying that right from now, lately, since I've been saying it? <laughs> I think it's Diane, or it could have been, yeah, I think it was Diane that commented saying how to pronounce it. random one. If you listen to music while you're quilting, what kind of music do you, my viewers, listen to? choice. Teresa. What kind of country? Classic country? New Age country? Um, I guess it would call, be called barn country where it's really instrumental with violins and stuff. Or 
pop, country pop. Notice I named off all the Janeers with one Janeer. <laughs> How funny. Oh, I know, I'm weird. Okay. So, like, Garth Brooks and Brooks and Dunn and things like that. Yes, I'm funny. I listen to everything, like literally, except for I I can tolerate, <laughs> and I don't listen to it by choice, but I listen to everything except for, um, what is it called? Oh, Spanish music. Uh, now I can't even think. Mariachi music. Other than that, I can listen to everything. Mom, can you take a pause with this piece on my bottoms with fast? No, I cannot. There's just a little itty bitty hole. Just a little stitch. And is it in the seam? No. Just pinch it together and sew it. Are you freaking kidding me? You want to sew this? Well, you know, when it's on my butt, it stretches. Because, you know, I have a big butt. I'm sewing clothes because that's what my family says to do. weird mark on your butt. <laughs> you asked for it. I didn't expect you to do it like that, but okay. You pinched it too bad. Too I know a lot of 90s and 2000s hip-hop rap. Like, I can sing along to Eminem songs, but then obviously my age has a lot to do with that, but my kids listen to newer stuff, and I, I've heard it but I can't sing along to it. I, what I was getting ready to say before she walked in, is I listen to everything, which is what I was saying, from classic rock to country to pop to um, alternative radio to new age to classical to <laughs> you name it, I listen to it. And I can sing along to country songs from the 80s, actually some 70s and 60s music too, if you're thinking about it. Like Elvis songs I could sing along to. Um, only because my tattoo on my chest is for representation of Elvis music, but um, I can see? sing along to everything. No. Except for Jiggly Butt. Don't talk about my butt. You have a big butt. What's funny though is how it gets that. <laughs> but. I can listen to and sing along to um, even Celine Dion songs. I was I grew up with classic rock mainly, but when I quilt, sometimes I even get in a mood where I'll listen to um, uh, heavy metal, <laughs> and I can sing along to some of it, like Metallica and such. And yeah, I'm all over the place with my music. When I do um, karaoke, I do a lot of country, though. I it. Leanne Rhymes is my imitation singing voice for country. Whatever's on the radio, <laughs> that's me. Right now, I have it on 90s, 2000s, today's hits on, Pan on Pandora. There's a ton of stations, but it's just whatever came on when I turned it on. I like some stuff, like Shania Twain has some really good uh, new country pop style music. Um, then there's a... Uh, God, I can't think of the name. That girl that won that TV show series, she's got some good country pop. Oh, this is this way. Very 
Frank Sinatra. I can listen to Frank Sinatra. Yeah, I used to, um, one of my marriages, he loved having the uh, stereo systems in the car that go boom, boom, boom. You guys all know about that because you hear it and stuff and probably your kids have had it, but he had those in all of our cars. So I kind of got used to the rap music and anything that had a lot of bass. It doesn't sound good though without being in a car with that, the boom, boom system in it though. You try to play the same song on your regular little, uh, speakers that for um you know streaming music it don't sound that good but that's how i came to being okay with that kind of music but i like listening to like lincoln park and evanescence and stuff like that as well i can sing really good to those i went and saw um live i don't know if you guys remember they're like a early 2000s late 90s um rock band live um i went and saw them in concert when i was a teenager and a bunch of other bands goo goo dolls i don't know if you guys remember them i saw them in concert yeah If I had the song on it, it would sound better because, yeah, I don't want to sing it without the music. <sighs> Plus, my voice still sounds scratchy from being sick. When I get into it, I sing. My kids like to record me on days that I do things like that. As you guys have noticed in my video of my daughter recording me dancing around. They would catch more if I didn't now know that they're actually recording. I don't trust them when they're out, look, you know, standing around me. <laughs> I always think they're recording something now. If their phone is in their hand, I think they're recording me, so I don't do anything stupid. Yeah, I loved a lot. I was obsessed with live. Lightning Crashes was my favorite song. Like, I could listen to that a bazillion times. night then Marie and good luck with restless legs because I have it too so I know <laughs> I just lay there and wiggle and wiggle and squirm and worm I know what it's like and when it acts up it's very painful nerve wise oh it eats at my legs it makes me feel like I want to scratch itch wiggle move squirm it's like a bazillion sensations all at once <laughs> else is supposed to be chatting. Why? Is there a lot of viewers and nobody talking? I'm here, but then I'm the host. <laughs> I gotta be here. I can't leave. I wish my thing told me how long I've been on. It's kind of dumb. I don't want to be a two-hour video like that one night, and I didn't even know that's how long I've been on. Because the rest of what I can do off-screen, you guys know what piecing rows are, you know? All the things you do when you go down on me In between those shoes and me Never break the tape 
See that I get into those modes where I just start singing. I want to do um, quilting karaoke, turning songs into quilting related songs, but I actually have to know the words to a song in my brain, be able to change them to do that. I do it a lot to old um, 80s and 90s music because I know most of the words while I'm in the garage when I'm quilting and I have the radio blasting so that nobody hears the sound of my machine when it's on the frame quilting quilting you know long arm quilting yeah I make up words to the songs to similar words and just use fabric thread quilting stitches shopping as the words I get silly about it Mostly listen, Tracy. You're supposed to be talking. Just kidding. Don't have to. Mostly listen to the sound of the machine. The sound of my voice is soothing. It's making you all like I'm hypnotizing you. Quilt more. Get those seams straight. <laughs> Line it up. Get it right. Yep. It's, it's, it's at its best hypnotism. <laughs> Y'all are zoomed. I do the same thing though when I watch everybody else. How do you not see? You couldn't see the chat. Throw down some thread, yeah. I actually listen to uh, hypnotism um, videos on YouTube, the eight hour um, sleep hypnotism for like better health. They have stress relief ones. Um, if you go down into my, like, if you go to my page and look in my um, liked or liked channels or like folders or whatever that have all my things that I follow or videos that I want to watch again, there's a bunch of those eight hour listening sleep hy hypnotism ones in there. And I've actually turned the volume all the way up once and just sat and listened to it. And some of the words they say are pretty inspirational to get you to hear that while you're sleeping it's pretty neat actually i don't know if my brain takes it in but they have them for everything from weight loss to anxiety to depression to uh they have ones to get up and and go to work and feel great about your work day uh, be better to people other people one not to be nervous like they have a lot they have ones to suppress childhood horrible childhood memories i mean they have some really crazy uh, hypnotism things here on YouTube. <laughs> so your chat thing was just not working then, huh? See, what I don't like about mine, since you have settings, I'm wondering if now you said settings changed it. If I have some kind of setting to see how long I've been on and how many people are viewing, because I can't see none of that. So I don't know. I don't really care how many people are doing because it's got a replay and people can come back. I'm not jonesing over that many people needing to be watching me. But I feel that uh, it would be nice to know how long I've been on. Because that, being able to keep track of that keeps me not boring everybody. I don't want to bore my audience. I want to keep you guys entertained. I want to spread my joy and my happiness. With lots and lots of sounds of machines. <laughs> the sound of quilting. So mesmerizing.
I should what? Be care be curious at how many people are watching me. Yeah, my machine's loud. I feel like you can't even hear me. If I'm sewing while talking, do you hear me very well? <laughs> because I know that this thing is loud. But I don't want to sew slow like... Oh, hold on. Let me see if I can go slower. Could you imagine sewing like this all day? Yeah. It's, it's going. I, I just can't do it. Can't do that. Just can't do it. Can't do it, guys. I don't know who does, but I can't. Just be able to find it. I don't know. I think it says it on that screen. How many people? Yes, yeah, sewing hips is that I kind of feel like it this is my trance. This and you guys probably feel the same way. Doing this is what puts you in the trance and keeps you interested in it. It's just like watching cement dry. It's mesmerizing. So this you're mesmerizing yourself and then you're accomplishing something at the same exact time, which is even better. And I have a feeling because it was already laid out on the floor, that this quilt is going to be definitely, uh, in certain angles, hypnotic to look at. <laughs> because of the color choice I chose. It's definitely, um, I don't know, it's really awesome. Like, I saw it in my head, the two different colors, and I was like, I gotta put that down on fabric. Get it? Put it down on paper? Put it down on fabric. <laughs> oh, how funny. <laughs> My mom didn't name me too funny for no reason. Yeah, I don't know. My phone might... I don't think my phone... The um, YouTube on my phone is an updated version. Because I don't have space on my phone to update anymore. Which is... That's why I can't use two programs at once. I have to, I have to clear out and then do it. All right, row six. I've done six rows. Woohoo! Six more to go. Six and six as well. Look at that. I'm smart. It's too late to apologize. It's too late. I deleted everything off my phone. My phone is just old. It's a um, Galaxy S4. So it doesn't hold much. It's only like 2 gig naturally or something like that. So all my photos and everything are all on a card thing. And that gets so full that it either kills out my phone or it um, doesn't allow me to have other programs running. So sometimes if I'm using Facebook and watching videos from Facebook, it'll kill my phone because it's using too much it's using too much data or something. I don't know. Yeah, I, it, the one that's in there now is a new one. It's all quilting related. Quilting, quilting, quilting. I take pictures usually of every step of quilting. I don't know why I do. I guess I just like to document my progress, but since I've been doing it live, it is documented, so. Now I can just look back on my videos. Which I have done quite often because I try to remember something that I did or said or something, and then I look back and go, oh, okay, I did cut that, that 
exact way, just in case I don't tell somebody who's asking me in the future what I did or what I didn't do. Yes, I'm talking so loud that out there can hear me. I don't have my thing under my door, but nobody's sleeping. It's too early. Four? Four people watching? That's it. I'm just kidding. I'm not up there. I am up there, though. My, uh, um, I was at, like, 76 the other day on subscribers. Sometimes my thing bings me if I have a new subscriber. And sometimes it doesn't tell me, and then when I go to log in to go live, that's when I notice how many subscribers I have. Why did I just do that? I'm a retard. I hit the pedal with my heel accidentally. Because my pedal has the cutter on it. I want to get one of those machines. Is it clean? Yes. That's in my dot. What is your phone? An S6? Or S7? S5. S5? Are you sure? Oh, my daughter got an S5 and it does a couple more things than mine does. Wow, like your S6 was old. I wonder what they'd say to mine being an S4. Hey, what my my whole theory is, if it's not broke, why replace it? <laughs> I've cracked my screen. It's still cracked. Um, my camera, my front-facing camera has dings in it. Uh, the battery I've had to replace twice, but... And it dies fast. It heats up very fast. And 90% of the time, the phone has to stay on the charger. <laughs> But it still makes phone calls, it still texts, it still watches videos, goes on Facebook, and guess what? That's all I need. <laughs> so, I ain't getting a new one, because when I went, we went to find my daughter a phone, even new old phones are still like $150, $160. And I'm poor. <gasps> I'm poor. There's no way I'm gonna. Me and my husband are gonna get new phones. He'll stick. He he loves his flip phones, like over these new phones. But our phones are convenient. That's why he doesn't complain about it because it's convenient to be able to look something up when we need to real quick or to uh, text someone instead of always having to call. But we are still traditional and we still have a house phone, a landline. It's pretty much the kids' phone, though. Full of creative ideas. Cute little tips and help and lots of... Yes, I am lots of conversation. I am a very... Uh, um, when I'm feeling good and, and I'm happy and everything is going okay and I'm not sick and miserable. I am very talkative. I'm very social, like very social. Um, I will talk to everybody at the grocery store. That's how social I am. I'm like, I don't know. I just am that way. But when I'm not in a good mood and I feel horrible, I don't want to talk to anybody because then they see it in me. They see that I feel like shit. <laughs> like, you can see it. You'll, you'll know when I'm, like right now, I'm good. But when I'm like really having a bad time, previous videos, I don't talk as much. I, I don't know. I'm perky when I feel good, which is a positive.
Note 5. No, it doesn't have any room. Mine does the same thing. It pops up with a little thing saying it has no space. Or it says, down, uh, when things update, it says, updates, ca updates cannot be downloaded. Please delete something. And then if I click OK, it goes to a screen to delete something. I'm like, I'm not going to delete the, the... I use Facebook, YouTube, and... Uh, Some, uh, no, Facebook and YouTube are the only things I have on my phone, I think. Oh, and Messenger. That's what I have. I to pick. I had to take off my quilting-related pages. And, uh, oh, and Yahoo Mail. I have my Yahoo Mail on my phone, too. Other than that, I don't have any other apps. I don't have any games or anything. All of my games and apps like that are all on that tablet that you guys are watching me from. Because that's really good. It's a RCA. It's just I just got it for Mother's Day last year. That's why I'm so new to it, though. The year before Mother's Day was this. Last year's was this, and then this year I got uh, wind chimes and stuff. So this is below. This is two years, well, three years old technically, because that was three Mother's Day ago. But um, yeah. Wow, I've had this machine that long. I just thought about that. Wow. Oh, yeah, this past Mother's Day, I got fabric, too. Note 5 and now S9. See, I like the S-series phones. Even though mine's an S4, I had an S2 before that, and I loved that thing. That thing lasted me forever. I had that for, like, five or six years. And this one I've had for four so, that's a lot of years of the S-series phones. And before that, I had just the, um, those sliding phones with the you could text it, but it was hurting my thumbs too much. You can't put uh, your card somewhere in your phone? My daughter's is hidden. It's behind the, uh, um... Not the SD card, but your SIM card. Her S6 that she has, or S5, whatever it is. Her SD card goes behind the SIM card, so you can't even tell that's where it goes. So you might want to check that. Yes, landlines are definitely good still to have. Yeah, that's what I keep telling everybody. They should have took pictures of those quilts individually and the quilting that everybody has done on those quilts for the veterans um, quilts, for the quilting marine. I really, really would have loved to see the quilting on everything and like the up close and detail work, you know, of the blocks being put together and the fabrics and stuff that are in it. I wish everybody would have took pictures and then, you know, sent them in or posted them on a Facebook something or uh what is called Instagram tagging it all, you know, uh, where you can put a hashtag thing and then it links all those pictures with that same hashtag to one specific album. That would have been nice to be able to see them all. Because one of the videos he made, it wasn't clear on my end. I couldn't decipher anything on the quilt. Yep, I'm definitely grumpy when I'm feeling like crap. Yep, updates is why our phones are out of memory. I should just end up getting myself a better laptop too because than what my husband has, so that way when it comes time to edit videos more, that I could probably do that better. Because right now I'm doing it for my tablet, and now my tablet has tons of video footage on it. But not just video footage from what I do here on YouTube, it's video footage from all sorts of things. It's all on my tablet. If I record something on my phone, and my card is full, I instantly send it to through um, email to my tablet, and then download it onto my tablet so I don't lose it. <laughs> 
and then it goes onto my card that's on my tablet. Between my phone and my tablet, I have like 64 gigabytes worth of cards in both of them. <laughs> yeah, flip phones had everything. Even my one that wasn't a flip, it was a slider phone. Shoot, that thing had everything too. All right, good night, Susan. Thank you for hanging out with me and watching me sew. <laughs> I'm not really tutorial, tutorial doing anything tutorial related besides the fact that I did start this for you guys to follow along with, so. For anybody that wants to make it like this in the future. Yeah, we have the landline just because of the kids. I've always had a landline, especially if I couldn't pay my cell bill, which has been never, because I've had Sprint since I was 17 years old. Same service. Not the same phone number anymore, but the same service. Oh, I don't know if anybody heard me before, but... Um, about me talking about this but I was uh, looking to find out how to get sponsors on YouTube so that I can um, you know if I say their product or whatever multiple times or whatever that they'll sponsor my videos as in it'll help me pay for supplies and stuff you know and to keep doing tutorials and uh, so I went on to a website that helps for people to get sponsors you have to have 5,000 subscribers even start applying for it. So, like, share, comment, share, share, subscribe, share the heck out of my videos, guys, because I need 5,000 subscribers. That's a lot to go. I'm in, I'm not even at 100 yet, and I'm already looking into sponsors, but sponsors will help me get better cameras, you know, so that I can do this better, uh, better lighting, so the that's why I was looking into getting sponsors, not just for free fabric or free rotary cutters, you know, for review purposes. No, I want the things that I need are like lighting and camera and editing programs, you know, editing for dummies <laughs> so that I can keep bringing you guys tutorials. So I was looking into it, but I can't get sponsors for anything until I have 5,000 subscribers. That's me. I talk to people everywhere. And when I go to anything fabric related, my husband can't get me out. So usually he don't go, but he can't get me out of places with fabric related because then people find out that they're, you know, they're there to buy clothing fabric or something and I'm there for quilting fabric and they're like, wow, you can make that? And then they want to see pictures and I'm like, oh, here, yeah, look at this is what I do. definitely very social and then when I talk with people on messenger I talk a lot too I say a lot I'm not a one-worded messenger person I have a lot to say and those of you who are watching that talk to me on messenger you already know that because I always have a lot to say I like to get it all out of one sentence doesn't complete what I was thinking in my head and if I don't release what's in my head then I ponder it, you know, and I don't want to ponder things forever. That's where getting this quilt done is, so that I can stop pondering on the lady that I'm, the customer's quilt, and get just started on it, and then I don't have to think what it's going to look like and get to what it's looking like. What are you saying that's insane to, Teresa? 
Is it a tab? Your Samsung Galaxy tab, Diane? My uh, tablet's an 11 inch. I, I couldn't find screen protectors because it's so big. I wanted to get a screen protector for it and it's so big so I had to buy a computer screen protector and then cut it down to fit my tablet. wasn't wanting to line up. You know another thing I notice when I'm quilting and I don't see how it happens and maybe it happens to you guys and I'm not the only one is my hair falls out a lot. Like it's probably just part of MS but my hair falls out a lot and it always is landing in the quilts and when I'm quilting when this is on the frame and I'm quilting I don't know how it happens I don't mess with my hair at all and most in the winter time when I quilt I usually have a beanie on to protect myself from the cold and yeah my hair ends up on the quilt and I thankfully notice it before I quilted into things but my hair falls out and it I just that's what I was picking up right now was my hair it's not just thread it's my hair from my head on my quilting Yep, 5,000 subscribers. Can you believe that? 5,000 before I can have any help with any of the things that are... Some of the products could be related to quilting, but most of it's related to running the tutorials in the first place. And since um, I've been told several times now that I'm a very friendly, pa friendly face, happy, easygoing person to talk to, and I make tutorials super easy, that... Um, I would be great doing it full time. Well, I can't do it full time until I have 5,000 subscribers. Like, I can't get any help with running them full time until I have 5,000 subscribers. I don't get it, you know? So, yeah. Stumb, that's their rules. So, 100 subscribers is not even gonna come close to what I need. And I'm looking forward to the 100 because 100 is going out to dinner with my husband, which is more important than subscribers, but still. I definitely would like to, you know, get it out there that this is definitely something exciting and, I don't know, in reality, it's a mind-blowing hobby. Like, the things that you can do with fabric, come on now. Obviously, I want to teach this. My thyroid, I just lose hair because of the MS, I think. it's It falls out, like, a lot. Like, in, I'm one of those people in the shower. I comb through my hair in the shower with the conditioner in it so that it goes through my hair and literally clumps fall out. And then I put it on the wall, and then we, I swirl it up into a swirl so I could take it out and put it in the trash. But I literally, they say the average person loses, like, 2,000 strands a day. I would say I lose probably 20,000 strands a day. Like, my hair comes out in clumps. So, when it's long, I have to keep it up. When it's short, it's not that bad. Like, it falls out so much when I'm sleeping at night, because I can't keep it up in a ponytail. It gives me a headache. When I'm sleeping at night, my hair falls out so much that I inhale my own hair. Like, I literally woke up choking on my own hair from inhaling it, because it's on my pillow so much. And that's just from moving my head in my sleep. Well, that sucks. Yeah, my daughter, she was tested for thyroid problems because everyone had, had um, thyroid disease and had to have radiation and so on and so forth from it. So my daughter was tested, but she lost her insurance, so I don't know if she knows her results yet or not. It was just recent, so that's why. But there's all sorts of thyroid problems, I know that. What will you add to your list? Diane. That's who I'm talking to. 
Sorry, sometimes when the chat goes too fast, I can't keep up with what I'm saying and what you guys are chatting, like, at the same time. If I didn't have to have this darn thing plugged in all the way over here and I'd have it in my face, then I would probably be able to keep up faster. But looking away to look at my other screen... That's why I can't wait till my new camera comes, because then I can turn the screen around and I can actually see it and then talk to you guys so much easier. Yeah, I know two people that have Graves' disease. They're always hungry. They're always, they gotta, not that, that, that they're starving hungry, but they like have to eat like more than 3,000 calories a day or something like that to keep things situated thyroid wise, I guess. I don't know. It's weird. They're weird little things that go with having it. See, like right here, I didn't care that two of these were next to each other. I don't care. I'm just putting them together. I moved a couple around because it was too congested, but other than that, I didn't move much around. When I started picking them up, I realized there was a couple. I don't care. Yikes, passed out from it all the time? Yeah, I know it causes a lot of problems because my first husband, well, my first husband died of um, pancreatic cancer. So, but it spread to his liver, lungs, heart, kidney, everything. It spread throughout his whole body pretty quick. And he had many, many, many surgeries. His colon had to be removed. Um, so he had a colonoscopy, a colostomy bag. I can't say that correctly. Um, he had all sorts of issues, but his thyroid thing was early before that was even diagnosed before the cancer. And he had to have radiation, which caused all sorts of other symptoms to develop over the years before he died. I know it eats up the human body when it doesn't work properly. Yep, I actually have a whole entire bottle of it. I just use biotin. I use the oil in my hair every once in a while, or else it keeps that wet look all day with the oil in your hair. And you have to keep it in your hair for like 24 to 48 hours for it to soak into your scalp <laughs> or however it works. You can also drink castor oil. Supposedly that's good for something too. I think it's digestive issues. I read an article about it like last year, I think it was. I was like, I'm not going to drink that stuff. Good night. Good night. Love you. Love you. I know. You're just gonna say, I love you. I love you. Thank you. Yeah, for pooping, that's what it was. <laughs> I knew it was for something like that. Yeah, the one I have is the keep it, it, you have to keep it in your hair for 24 hours. It makes my hair super, super, super duper soft though, like amazing soft. But then I've also tried products to make my hair thicker. That don't work because I just am a naturally thin haired person. I have three rows left to sew, by the way, so I'm going to just continue on, I guess. So the last three rows. And then for you guys also, one and two, row one and two together, and then get off. How's that sound? So chit chat. Until then.
But I am going to take a potty break, so give me two seconds real quick, guys, okay? You going to bed, Diane? I'm going to go to the bathroom, though. If you say goodnight, then obviously that means you're going goodnight. I'll be right back. Okay. Sorry. My hair is too soft. It's changed over the last two years. It's okay. Diane, good night. All right. Good night, Diane. No, you're with what? What do you say? <laughs> I had to pee so horribly bad, and then I am not caught up here. <laughs> Some of my pieces are turned, and I just realized that there's two pieces now that were the opposite direction that they're supposed to be. But I'm not going to care. I'll find it when I put the rows together. Pretty sure I've been paying attention, though. Over on just I've been on for a while because I usually pee every hour exactly every hour on the hour not exactly on the hour but I usually pee once an hour so that's how I know if I've been on a while sometimes during me is more than that but that's just because I have a mess and my bladder is not receiving the proper signals sometimes when I go pee it's just the slightest barely anything and then other times it's like a gallon <laughs> yes i'm talking about my urination pro problems live but that's what happens when you have ms it gets really horrible no what the hell is happening here uh-oh 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 Oh, you were saying goodnight to my daughter. Yeah, she's she's got school tomorrow. All right, where was I? All right, let's go on with this real quick. So who's left? Diane, Teresa, who else? Who else is in here? Oh, Tracy, okay. Who else? Anybody else? <laughs> All right. That's why I'm glad we have two here. One is mine. 
And then one is everybody else's. When my kids were little, we lived in a house with one bathroom, and it was horrible because during their potty training years, it's like to keep them from doing it in a diaper or something, I had to put them on the toilet, but when I had to go, I had to go. <laughs> and then they would have to go, and yeah. It was always sometimes just too much, especially with four kids. Of course, when they're kids, they follow you into the bathroom, and you don't live alone ever. Or you don't go to the bathroom alone ever when you have littles. <laughs> Never. So for all those people who are becoming new parents that are watching this later, let me tell you, you're never going to use the bathroom alone ever again. <laughs> Even when they're teenagers, they still come into the bathroom. But then I'm mom, and the boys don't, just the girls. <laughs> So there's only three people anyway. Okay. Yeah, I definitely need more than one toilet. And I always thought with a house of boys, I just need a urinal too. That would help, you know. They only go to the bathroom every couple. When it comes to number two, they don't go as often as us ladies go number one. So they can live with a urinal if you have the money to put a urinal in your house. And you have lots of boys. Definitely a smart idea. I'm doing actually really good with the seam matching, like, even though I'm trying to sew in, like, not a hurry, but... I'm trying to sew as if nobody's watching me, so. Yeah, they go outside too, here, all the time. I can too, though. Surprisingly, I don't have to squat to pee, unless I'm wearing pants, then I would have to. But if I'm wearing a dress or skirt, which is my usual attire, then I know how to stand and pee. Without that sheep peeing that they make, that, um, they have that device for women to use. It's like a little cup thing that goes below and then it has like a long stem called the she pee. I can go to the bathroom without that outside. I could stand and pee. I'm pretty, pretty talented when I taught myself how to do that one. <laughs> and now everybody in the world knows that one too. Hmm, go figure. I'm odd though. I just kind of, because I couldn't squat for a long time with my problems, and when I was in my wheelchair, and if I was outside at like a thing, and I couldn't go into those urinal things, those uh, porta potties, I'd just go around back, hold myself up in the wheelchair, stand and do my thing under my skirt, you know, nobody could see me back there, and then I'd walk away. <laughs> Not walk away, roll away. You know what I mean? Not right. I'm just a little disturbed in the head. <laughs> I'm silly. That's my thing. And I know all sorts of weird stuff. Not even quilting related. I guess I gotta go back on topic though, huh? Back to the topic.
I'm not gonna say that out loud. My one daughter has them. I just said it out loud. My one daughter has thighs like that too. She has to take showers often. Keep it clean in there. I don't think the little baguette toilet would uh, help that cleaning that whole area. Was it necessarily? I don't know. I used to have thick thighs though. Lost it all. Now I just have hangy skin, which is not pretty either. So it's always covered. They're already gone for the day. Today's Sunday. Some Sundays we have them, some we don't. Some they're late, some they're not. But today was an early Sunday. So they went home at, um, I was talking to you when, uh, they left, Teresa. It was like 4.15, 4.30, somewhere around there today. They went home and then tomorrow we're off and then the next day it'll probably be 2 30 to 11. it's usually the same times every week but sometimes different weekdays are different days off it was always mondays and wednesdays now it's um or Sundays and Wednesdays. Now it's mo Mondays and Wednesdays, and sometimes it, it's all over the place. The schedule. I would like to not have to wipe myself with toilet paper. Let me tell you. And then picky too, I have to use um, Scott Ultra Soft. I am a very, very picky toilet paper person. This toilet paper that, if you pat the toilet paper on, like, just the roll rolled up, and you pat it on your hand, and you see little dust fleckle, speckles everywhere, that's not a good toilet paper, and it's not very healthy for a woman down there. So, um, I went through... I don't know, like 15 different brands before I came to the Scott, the Scott Ultra Soft, because I patted them all and there was too much dust. The Scott, the Scott doesn't do that, so, and it's a single ply, which is probably why it doesn't do that, because those double plies are the ones that are really powdery. I don't know why toilet paper companies don't put women white two places with toilet paper. Men only wipe one place, so I don't know why toilet paper companies didn't put that in mind when they made them to not make toilet paper so powdery. Or dust, paper dusty, you know? That's pretty much what it is. All right, good night, Diane. Get some rest. I just have one more and then I'm gonna so that last row and then I'm going to hook them row one and two together on camera and then the rest I'm just gonna do show you guys what it looks like later I'll probably come back with doing the borders or something you know and not tonight obviously all right one more row And I'm keeping my numbers on my rows, by the way, too. <laughs> that way, I don't lose my orientation. Stay. Yep, best way to choose toilet paper if that's what we're talking about still. When, yeah, there's more of my hair. It's 
tied back to, I don't understand it. Um, those with medical conditions definitely should, especially women, using toilet papers that aren't dusty because that can also affect our medical problems. Like women who have um, uh, fibrocystic ovaries and fibrocystic uterus and uterine problems and cervical problems and so on and so forth, toilet paper could be what to blame too. They don't put that out there on the market though because everybody needs something to wipe their butt. But in reality, that could be part to blame for infections and yeast infections and uh, PID, pelvic inflammatory disorder, and, and so on and so forth. Like, it could be toilet paper causing it. Nobody thinks about to think it and put it out there and test that theory, but toilet paper is marketed to wipe our asses. That's it. Nothing else about anything that I just spoke of. So is it just you, Teresa? Are you the only one left now? Did everyone else go to bed? Did you just answer me? Because I don't know if that's a new comment or not. So it's just you? Huh. Well, that'll be replay for anybody else. So I can't believe that whole thing about my needing uh, 5,000 subscribers to have uh, support for being a tutorial, someone who does tutorials. I guess I'm going to have to pump out some really cool stuff to get that many viewers. Or at least subscribers. I mean, you know what I mean. What are you cutting for? Are you doing your wallet still? Is that what you're doing? Yep, it's very insane. I don't know. How is someone supposed to start? I mean, I don't even know if I have enough material to do a tutorial a day to, you know, bring in the people because then I'm going to run out of things to tutorial. If you think about it, you know, like, I don't know what else is going to keep my a fan base interested if I do the same stuff over and over again. You know what I mean? That's why I've been doing different stuff and... I'm definitely not good at math enough to design and make that many things, to design enough quilts to do videos every day being different. I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to get to 5,000. Unless somebody's watching my video replays and saying, hey, this girl does great tutorials. Let's see what we can do to help her. And that would be how I would get it. But if I don't qualify, I don't qualify, I guess. Oh, pillowcases, okay. Is it late for you already? Isn't it like, let's see, what time is it here? 9.50. 9.50, Oh my god, are you serious? So it's after midnight for you now, isn't it? Or I mean, almost midnight. We're three hours ahead. It's 10, 11, 12. So it's 1 a.m. Turning 1. Yeah, that's what I meant to say. Turning 1. Well, you have nothing else better to do than to watch me and cut fabric, huh? <laughs> That's what I do when I watch other people. I have nothing else better to do. I could do my own tutorials, but then they're on live, so, you know what I mean? It's hard to go on when someone else is on because I know I have some of the same viewers. So, I don't want to stomp on someone else's 
place, you know? Oh! Tracy's just uh, hypnotized and, and not talking. She's just watching. <laughs> watching my very whatever conversation. All right, so since I have row 12 already up here, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab row 11, and since I know 11 goes on top of 12, I'm going to lay it up, putting it right sides together, and up. Get it to turn the whole way. There we go. Turn it. I'm going to check one more time to make sure 11 is on top and I'm sewing on the right side. So, yep, 11 is on top. Now, this is a lot of seams to match this whole way down. This is going to be the only one, and I'm definitely going to have to be flipping seams this whole entire time. So, bear with me on this really long seam. And I'll just do this one, and then we can get off of here. And I'll let you ladies get back to your nights. And I usually don't backstitch, but I'm going to on this one particularly because I have so many seams to nest that I'm kind of pulling a little bit on the fabric. I'm not pulling to distort, I'm pulling to line up. Since there's so many seams to nest, that is one thing about the disappearing four patch. There's more seams than the disappearing nine patch. <laughs> Definitely a lot of seams here. And again, people who aren't comfortable can just go ahead and pin every single one of them. I, on the other hand, am not going to. Because I don't see no point in pull it, pinning it and then having to pull it all out. like to watch and learn. That's why I said it's okay. You don't have to chat. Are you learning? Are you going to be doing this one? <laughs> I'm learning from myself. Hell. I'm like learning to pay attention more. <laughs> And not speed through everything, which is what I always do. Like, if I actually sat and spent the time that some other quilters spend on one single quilt, I would probably only do maybe three quilts a year. Because I would be so hard on making sure that everything is perfection. But I'm going for the silliness of this quilt. The, the idea behind this was to be crazy and fun and mismatched. You know what I mean? It wasn't meant to be perfect. So. I wish I had the closer can't wait till my new camera comes because then I can give you guys closer views on how I fold these seams and let the material do it and the feed dogs do the pulling to put everything situated right, you know? A lot of these are being flipped in totally different ways. You could probably see it here. See? They're all being flipped. Like that but I'll just go through the whole entire thing and if any of them aren't pressing flat I'll just put a slit and then a slit right up to the edge of that quilting or the um, stitching line and then see it'll lay nice and flat to the way you want it to lay I probably won't though because I'll get it to lay flat and the quilting is gonna hide it anyway honestly so it's not a necessity to go through and do that, but if you're particular about it and you want everything to lay as flat as possible, then I would go through and do it all. I probably will when I get bored since this will be sitting for a while until I can quilt it.
Yeah. Well, I figured with just my lighting change, it's a lot better. So that was definitely a plus, putting um, the lights in there. Make sure they're all in their proper orientation. So that's the top. That's the top. Yep, yep. And what I'm making sure is that this piece is the same as this piece, but that the black is separate, you know, they're all opposite. And they are. So there's two together. Should I put one more, I guess, while you guys are here, or should I just... Because that actually went on faster than making the row itself. Or um, has it been on too long? Let me check my screen and see. Yeah, it was too hot in my garage. It was still... Well, this screen says there's five people watching. Who's all five there? Hello, out there. It's okay if you're not talking, though. <laughs> what the heck? I can zoom? Oh my god, I just learned something new, guys. Look, I can zoom. Ha oh, ha, look at that. You guys can see this pretty darn clear, though. Alright, I'm going to do one more, but I still can't tell how long I've been on. Oh, we're right. Almost two hours, so let's finish it with a two hour. One more piece. How's that sound? Alright, let me put one more row on. Wanna. He just made it at the very end where I'm going to just put one more row on here. Alright, so 12 is on my bottom. 11 is above it because I'm going opposite way now so I don't have to dig through the pile behind me. We're going to take row 10 and make sure that it's in correct. See, here's my row 10. I'm going to make sure that it's facing the correct way. That's why I like writing on my little paper and pinning it. Then I'm just going to put it right sides together. I'm going to try to straighten it up as best as I can on the way down. There we go. Now they're together. We're just going to sew it on. Names on the way because there's... I'm going to try to count these as we go. So I'm not going to pay attention to you guys first. I'm going to count how many seams there are doing ten of crafts. Only because I'm curious. All right. It's nice to have it on your lap, especially if it's all facing the right direction. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. <laughs> How funny. That's another reason why I like having this magnetic thing right here. When you're doing the piecing of the rows, it gets starts to get heavy and it'll start falling off of your sewing machine or off your table and it'll start wanting to pull to one way. Having this magnet here with this little seam guide helps keep it aligned so that the side that's on your lap is gonna be turning wanting to go one way and this side's gonna to wanna to go the other way. So it helps keep it all aligned, and those when you get to the seam, it helps keep those aligned so you're not trying to follow your quarter-inch line. So some kind of seam guide is always the best when it comes to putting um, strips together like this. So now let me remember, I'm on number 15 of the seam. Seam 15. 16. 17. 18.
39 scenes to match in one 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 row with 10 so 39 times 12 rows that's how many seams I'm matching <laughs> all right let's make sure we got it correct that's up at the top top top, top. all right so there's three so far Here, I'm gonna, um, now that I just realized I can zoom, I'm gonna bring the camera before I get off of here. Let's lay this right here. So you guys can see my, not pressed, but, um, because they're not pressed yet, but my nested seams. My fan wants to blow everything everywhere. All right, so before I get off, um, I'm gonna just be messing with this because I just realized it can zoom. So if anybody needs to say anything, Say it now. Um, but I'm gonna start showing you guys this, and I'm gonna say my goodbyes from this scene, and we'll end with my nested seams. <laughs> 39 per row. My goodness. With 12 rows to do. That's a lot of seams to match, but I can do it. So, like, subscribe, thumbs up, you know, the subscribe information below to all my other accounts. Um, my normal spiel is not coming out like I had hoped. Anyways, all right, let me bring this over here, and I thank everybody for watching, because obviously I love when I have followers that love to hang out with me. Ouch. All right. Yes, it is definitely too hot in my garage to quilt. All right, so obviously this is not pressed yet. That's close enough. That one's on perfect like that's what you want to see once it's pressed you want to take your fingernail and be able to go straight to the next one without any lumps or bumps that is what you're looking for people so let's find another one see that's off just a little where's my finger that's not that one is off just slightly that one's just slightly off but look at that there's another one that's great See, where you can see the color going through and through. Obviously, it's not pressed, but once I press it, here's my fingernail. Uh, there's a fingernail. You just take your fingernail, and if it goes straight from one side to the other, and you don't have any mess ups, then you know that you got it nice and correct. Here's a close up of all the fabrics, by the way. The black picks up thread, but. Obviously, it needs to be pressed. Look at that. I'm trying to ma match them all. This is without pins. Remember, I don't do with pins. Look at that. That's as close as close could be without pins, you know? Look at that. Doing pretty good, guys. This is what you guys want to learn and what you want to be able to do. You want me to do one more, Teresa? Okay, fine. I'll stick around and do one more then. All right, let me put this back then. You just want to watch me get this done, huh? <laughs> All right. Is that good? Right there. Stay. Stay. All right. I'm trying to put it back the way it was because when I move the thing, it... Okay, I think I was just reading another comment. I'm not sure. Did you want me to put on one more row? Okay, then I'll put on another row. Alright, let me adjust that right there where you guys can see. I know you guys just love watching so much. Oops. I almost knocked my thread out. I can show you how to pin this whole entire row. You want me to pin this whole row? That, actually, let's do that. We'll end it with one row pinned. Okay. So, 
Sorry, I had to adjust something on the camera or else it would die. We don't want it to die. So, we're going to pin row 10 on here to row 9. So first off, you want to make sure, look, that you have your row 10, and row 9, well, actually whatever row you're working on. For these long, long, long rows for pinning, rows right side together, the first thing you want to do is right side together the whole entire piece. It's best to do it on a table, but obviously my space is kind of messy right now. Okay, and I'm just going to start right here because this side is pulled up. We're going to grab some pins. And remember, my seams are messing. Um, I'm going to be flipping them as I go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook my end together where I want it first. I'm going to start with the end where I want it to be lined up. Oops, the pin didn't go the way I had hoped. I'm going to put that pin in there. Then I'm going to take this seam and put them the way I want them to go. I'm going to take my sewing needle out of the way and find the pin pin. And I'm going to put the pin in, straight down in, and then I'm going to lift it up in the seam line. So again, you nest the seam the way you want it. So on this particular project, I'm putting the top, popping them up, which is away from. I'm coming down into that seam, coming up out of that seam. Again, coming down into the seam, coming up out of the seam. There's 39 pins we're going to have here, guys. Make sure I have plenty of them out here. Into the seam, out. We're going to see how much difference this whole pinning thing actually makes. The whole entire thing. My seams are pretty good without pins. After a while, you get used to it. I'm not too particular about it unless it's like something that's going in my Etsy shop or something. Then I'll be more careful about where my pins go. Or about my seams, honestly, because right now they are being pressed without being pressed. They're being hooked together. Normally they'd be pressed. It doesn't help that I have... Um, safety pins in here from when I was quilting the other day. So again, just taking it, and this top one is going the wrong way, so I'm going to make it go the right way. I'm going to feel with my fingers, it's going to lay, they're going to be on top of each other. Like literally fill as flat as can be from the top to the bottom. I always put the needle in the seam. Some people put it along the seam or to a side the seam. I put it in the seam. So I go to the line that's on my fabric from my stitching, and I go in that one side, and then you can go to the other side and say, oh, okay, it came out inside that line, and then come back up to the top of that line. And all my seams, or my pins are sticking out because I want them away from my seam guide. I have a hard time remembering to pull pins out, which is another thing, beginners, um, you got to remember to pull your pins out because sewing over them could be bad. And I know because I've sewn over them and sewn to where my needle on my machine has broke because it caught one or it had bent pins and then it bent my needle, which is not very good. So I'm going to do half of it with pins because I feel like this is taking so long. And then see how the pinned ones come out compared to the non-pinned seams. How's that? Because I think I'm, like, seriously got 39 seams to do here. And that seems like a lot. Actually, it is a lot. I can't say it seems like a lot because if you're spelling it seams as in the seam, that's a lot of seams. <laughs> so it is a lot. Alright, we're going to stop at this seam right here. And we're going to see the difference. I'm going to put a big pin in so I know that that's where I'm 
my change off was. Alright, now that I've poked the crap out of my fingers. Yeah. Alright, so non pin at the top compared to pin at the bottom. We're going to look at this. So, on the side that has my writing with my little papers, all the way down to my halfway point pin, we're going to see the difference of pinning and not pinning. Alright. are poking me on my leg right now and it feels good <laughs> that goes to show how much my leg feels. pins feeling good on my leg yeah it depends on what kind of pins you're using too like the ones that I don't know if you guys can see the ones that have that thing on the tips, see that? And they're really short. Those ones are okay to go slow over. But the ones that are larger like this, with the big ball on the end, can you see that? The ones with the big ball, those are not very safe to go over at all, even if you're going slow. I believe that going over this needle is so much thicker. And then I don't have one up here, but they have even bigger ones. And then the ones that are really okay ah, are the pins. You can't even see this. I know you can't. But whoop, they're so tiny. See that? You can stick it in your finger. That's how tiny they are. They are super tiny. Like it doesn't hurt at all. It won't cause me to bleed or anything. These little dinky pins these are 100% safe to go over so I have a lot of these but these are harder to grab because they don't have a, they're a flat edge they don't have nothing to grab onto you know so they're harder to grab it out of the, the um, dish so there's definitely different kinds of pins to try out if you're one that wants to pin them in but then you got to remember to take all the pins out <laughs> once you're done sewing over them because then you're going to be quilting one into a quilt, and you definitely don't want that. All right, I'm almost to the pin. going over them slowly see I heard that one hit the needle like that's why I don't trust them but I'm gonna go over them anyway slowly supposed to happen. That pin has to come out. It's assortment of sizes here. Some of them I'm afraid to sew over. And I'm coming to my end. 
which I don't need to have the pin in. I just had the pin in to hold it where I wanted it to stay. All right, so my center pin is going to stay in right here. I'll just put it on the front of the fabric so I can see where we're looking at. And I do not want to leave any of these in. All right, let's see the difference, everyone, and then we will get off of here. I'm going to make sure that there's nothing poking me. Okay. <laughs> I don't think pins did it very much difference all right all right let's bring it over remember this isn't pressed yet either so all right so right where my fingers are so this was a pin that was a pin look at how off that is so pins don't always do it. I think holding it manually, if you want an honest opinion, if anybody wants an honest opinion, look at this. Pins aren't always, like, see, that one's good, that one's good, and that one's good. Once it's pressed. Oh, right there, that's good. I'm trying to... Those are all pinned. I mean, that one could be better. There's still, that one's good. That one's good. Good. falling as I go. Alright, where's my pin now? Okay, so here's my halfway point. So there was a pin here. Okay. Now, we're going into the no pin zone. No pin zone. And the fan is on, so it's kind of blowing. No pin zone. I don't know, my camera keeps saying, or the screen is saying uh, rotate or something. That one's a little off. That one's off. Uh, that one's accurate. So I think it's like 50-50, honestly. There's some that are really bad and some that aren't. Like that. So these are the non-pin zone. That one's good. That one. So yeah, I think the non-pin zone is just as good as the pin zone, honestly. But it's easier and quicker to just not pin. Stay, you stupid thing. All right. Well, it says I have three watching. I have four thumbs up. Yay! And I've been on for two minutes, tw two hours and 22 minutes and six seconds. So... All right, let me sit down in front of you real quick. So that is the difference between pinning and not pinning. Honestly, it's a comfort thing. So if you're more comfortable putting a pin in your seam, then do so. But don't freak out if that pin doesn't help your seam. But right up. Like what we're technically doing here is if you take your fingers and you make knuckles and you fit them in like a zipper it's kind of what we're trying to do here 
you want them to butt up to where each and every individual piece lays itself that it's locked in and there's no way to go the opposite way so if it's locked in like a zipper you can't go through it with anything you can't stick a needle through a zipper you get where i'm going obviously you can stick a needle through fabric but you can't through do it that way so when they're butted up and it creates that straight line like this is not a straight line but this one is when it creates that straight line and your finger my fingernail is not long but my middle one is it just goes in one straight line so if i took these scissors and i just drew it right here obviously if it was pressed it's that straight line my scissors have not moved it's just one continuous line that is what you're looking for so whether you're pinning or not pinning for comfort or for because you're a beginner and that's what you were taught do it um if you want to spend the time to put 39 pins in every single row do it that's probably what takes people so long to do a quilt i find that holding it with my finger and putting those seams right next to each other comes as close closer in most areas so it helps a lot easier so yes well that's why i showed you guys so for those of you who are like me and it's not that i'm in a rush but when i start something it's like um it's a it's a need a want a desire to finish it because i just think about it constantly new quilters you're not used to that brain thing that goes on but when you start quilting and you and people who actually enjoy it and do it for all the reasons that i do I would say that getting it done to me fast bam bam done to me is so much better so since it takes so long would it would kind of irritate me to have to pin 39 seams every single row for 12 rows yeah so i prefer just do it by finger so for beginners go ahead and pin see how you like it see how you like quilting and if you do then you found yourself an awesome hobby because this is super fantastic fantastically amaze balls fun <laughs> yeah i got some weird words coming out but so anyway yep just like she doesn't do the feed dogs when quilting sometimes i forget too but i just actually watched her video today <laughs> she washing quilt with a really cool star that i really want to try out on my quilt because it looks so awesome so i'm going to probably throw my uh um imagination quilt my growing gonna get it done quilt someday and try that star out because that looked like super fun to do and it looks really cool i like the the eyes the, the sight of it is aesthetically pleasing so all right well to Devana and teresa and i remember it said four so i don't know who else is watching um thank you for watching um I'm kind of glad I actually stuck around to do one more. This is a very long video, and I'm super sorry for that. But you know what? The more you watch it, the more you can build the confidence to do it yourself. So that's a plus. So stick with me, you guys. You'll learn a lot. Um, you will. And even for people who've been quilting a long time, definitely better tricks and tips to getting it done faster because there's a lot of people who take a long time. You just need the willpower to keep going. <laughs> like me subscribe for uh new watchers subscribers new people <laughs> and uh yes i'm silly i know i am and i'll see you all next time um thank you for watching tiffany's quilting life and while i'm walking over here to turn it off share 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 guys share share those videos Good night, everyone.